Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to talk about the SMSL SU-X $1000 DAC. So please, sit back, relax, and we'll get going on this. He knows just the way to draw you inside. Old Guy Hi-Fi reviews what's new. Bringing back the past with a modern view. Stereo sound waves you won't deny. Taking us high with Old Guy Hi-Fi. So the SMSL SU-X sits very near the top of the SMSL product line. I think there's only one unit above it. At $1,000, obviously SMSL has lavished a ton of engineering on it. Beautiful casework, just a lovely design. Loads of goes into as it goes out is. Let me show you the back real quick. Uh, AC socket, uh, USB-B, USB-C, Toslink, coax, I squared S, that's a little Bluetooth connector right there. And I'll show a picture of the back. ASEBU and then balanced and single ended output. So very, very full featured. It can act as a preamp. It does have a variable output or fixed output function. It does come with a very nicely uh, full featured, kind of very typical SMSL remote, which I think at $1,000, they could probably have done a little bit better with that. Um, but again, SMSL has lavished and is very proud of the technology they put in this. They have what they call their third generation XMOS XU316. Uh, XMOS processor that supports PCM 32-bit 768 and DSD 512. Um, and I'll have to insert pictures of the interior because I can't open this one up. It has two groups of linear power supplies, one for digital and one for analog, and they use multiple low noise regulated rails for that. Um, it does use ESS uh, Pro, their new 9039 MS, uh, MS Pro chip, and it's two of them, so it is a balanced architecture. It does use eight channels, uh, parallel circuit design for that, so very low noise. I'm sure it measures ex exceptionally well. I didn't look it up any of the measurements. Um, they, it uses 21 high-end op-amp, dual channel op-amp outputs. Um, they've created a what's called CK03 um, phase lock loop uh, SPDIF input processor to obviously reduce jitter because SPDIF always has issues with jitter and timing. So they've re, they're reclocking that and did a very good job with it. And I also, when I used it on I squared S, I did use an SMSL Pro 100 DDC as well. Um, and so again, they've lavished a lot of uh, attention to it and a lot of build quality. And it is, it's very well constructed. Um, and I used it in a lot of different ways. I kind of threw everything I had at it. I used it with the uh, Galleon TS120 uh, SE amplifier. Uh, the tube amp. I used it with the um, TS-75. I used it with my CXA-81, my EVO 150. Um, I used it with the Advanced Paris XI-75 and an Audio Lab 6000A. I used it with all the speakers I have, my Big Wharfdales, the ELAC DVR-62s, and my energy reference speakers. Um, and I used it in the headphone rig with the uh, Sparkos Gemini headphone preamp. Uh, connected to this. And I tried. There are eight different filters. I tried all of them. There are 16 different so sound modes. I tried most of those. Um, and I'll be absolutely dead honest with you. I couldn't find a setting that sounded good to my ear. Um, you guys have heard me talk about it. I take a lot of heat for it and I don't really care. I, there is a thing that I believe in it's called Saber Glare and this has it in buckets. Um, it is just strident and hard to listen to through the mid-range, upper mid-range, and lower treble. There is just so much energy there, and I don't know where it comes from. And I have I hear it in virtually every ESS chip, probably with the exception of the 9018, which is an older chip, tends to have far less glare than the newer ones. And this is interesting because this is, I think, ESS. Uh, it's their, it's a current-based chip design rather than their traditional voltage-based chip designs. But still, it's just the glare made it hard to listen to. And I anecdotally heard from some other folks that they described the sound as fingernails on a blackboard. I don't think it was quite that bad. But I did have a difficult time finding a, a, a sound signature for it or a setting or a combination of equipment that it sounded good to my ear. So unfortunately, the SMSL SU-X 
does not earn any praise from me. Uh, and I apologize. You may love it. You may not. It's worth a try, I guess, if you've got a thousand dollars to roll the dice. Anyway, that's the SMSL SU dash X. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. I apologize if you didn't. Hopefully you'll be willing to give me a like and a subscribe. Uh, and if you wish to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. Also too, there are membership links in the pinned description, the pinned comment, excuse me, and in the video description as well. In the video description, there are affiliate links to Amazon. There won't be an affiliate link for this, unfortunately. Um, there are also in the description of the video, my playlist that I use to, when I evaluate gear. I would encourage you to please send me your playlist. We're filling out that community post with playlists very, very nicely. If you wish to, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, please comment. Anybody who comments knows I respond to the comments, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, and I really am grateful for your time. And I think that's all I have to say about the SMSL SU-X DAC. My name's Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. And now it's time for you to go listen to some music that you enjoy on a system that you find pleasurable. And thank you so very much for your time.